Well, it's time for another video, and in this tutorial, we're going to explain the use of a silicone additive SC5002, or 5002. And this is a silicone thinner, or silicone fluid, that can be added to silicone formulas to lower the viscosity and lower the durometer. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to be adding this additive to 5110F platinum silicone. Now, this is part of the 5100 series of platinum silicones that I've highlighted in a couple of other videos. And all of these silicones in this series cure translucent, which makes them ideal for both molding applications and casting applications. And these come in a variety of durometers from really, you know, fairly firm to fairly soft. Now, the whole point of the SC5002 additive and being able to soften formulas like this is there might be a gap sometimes between silicone formulas. Like this, for instance, is around a 25 shore A, and this one is a, around a 5 shore A. So there's an obvious gap there in that A scale between these two silicones. So what we can do if we need something in between these, if, if we're making a mold that requires a specific softness or a part that requires a specific softness, we can add the SC5002 to bring this down closer to this 5. But in this video, we're actually going to be dropping the 5 down even lower to a shore 0020. So that's really important, again, so that you can take these existing formulas and adjust them to what you need them to be on that A scale or even the double O scale. Now to begin, we're going to spray our mold with mold release. This is a TC800 resin mold, and more about that in a future video. But we're going to take that resin mold and spray it with ZIP301 mold release. Real important here, we wanna make sure we spray that, brushed into the detail, and then allow it to dry. And that's an important step. You don't want that outgassing into the silicone after you cast it. Now, the silicones that we're gonna pick from today are the BJB one-to-one -one ratio translucent silicones. And I really like this line because you can use these for both mold making applications as well as casting applications. So that just opens up a much broader range of things you can do with these silicones. Now, for this particular cast, I'm going to be using the 5110. Now, 5110 is the soft skin-like silicone that cures to around a short a5. And TC5110 comes in two different formulas, so we'll go over the properties of that really quick here. 5110 is available in a regular and a fast version, that's the F formula. And that's a one-to-one -one mix ratio, and it already has a really low viscosity of 2500 centipoise. It's soft 5A. And the regular formula has about a 30 minute working time and a three to four hour demold at room temperature. Whereas the fast formula is around a seven minute working time and around a one hour demold. And this is the important detail. Even though this is a low viscosity formula, this still responds to the SC5001 thickening agent. So this can be chemically thickened as well as softened as we're going to do in this video using the SC5002. Now, fun fact, SC stands for single component, TC stands for two component. I did not know that until just a couple of weeks ago, so there you go, fun little bit of information. Now, all these silicones fall on a combination of the double O scale and the shore A scale, so it's important to know where those sit on that scale and have a good understanding of that scale. So the double O scale, we're gonna start on the left-hand side with very soft and on the right-hand side to very hard. Now, to starting off with the softest, we have the 0010, which would be about like warm chewing gum, up to about a 0020 or 0030, which would be like a very soft earlobe. And then, moving up to the A scale, we have really soft around a 5, which would be like average human skin. Then, of course, 20 would be like a rubber band, 40 like a pencil eraser. And then, moving on up, we get really firm rubber like a car tire at about the 65 to 70 range. And then, moving up from that, the top end of the A scale, we have really hard rubber like a caster wheel or an industrial roller. 
Now let's go over where those silicones fall on that double O and A scale. So starting on the left hand side we have the really soft supple 5100. TC5100 is going to be very soft like an earlobe. Then the slightly firmer TC5110. That's going to be around an A5 or an average skin softness. And then moving up from that we have the TC5130 which is about a 25 shore A. Then the 5140 and the 5150 and both of those can be used for applications where you're simulating uh, human cartilage or firmer organic tissue. Now for this we're going to be using the 5110 and again the whole point of this is to show you how you can take that existing formula and modify it to fill a gap in that scale because obviously there's not going to be a silicone for literally every point on that scale. So it's important to know how to modify those to get what you want. Now this first cast we're going to do using 50 grams of part A and 50 grams of part B of 5110F. And I really like the fast formula. Fast formula again is about a seven to eight minute working time at room temperature and about a one hour demold. And I'm here in Texas where it's typically fairly warm. So sometimes I can even demold in under an hour, like around 45 minutes. So nice for fast turnaround, especially product development applications where you need to produce a part quickly or just production casting. Now I'm adding a little bit of our flesh tone to that and mixing that in and again this is just the TC 5110F mixed one to one and this can also be mixed one to one by volume. You can mix it one to one by weight or volume but you want to be as accurate as possible in these small batch sizes. Now once we've got that mixed up, we're ready to pour that into our mold. And I'm not even going to degas these batches. This is a, a fairly simple part. And because this does have that really low viscosity, a lot of simple parts like this don't have to be vacuum degassed. But at the end of this video, on the end screen, be sure to check out my video on vacuum degassing so you can see why that's important for other applications. Now we're going to set this aside and let that cure and now ready to mix up our batch of 5110F with the SC5002 thinner. Now this batch I'm mixing 50 grams of part A plus 50 grams of part B plus 50 grams of SC5002. Now this isn't the top end of this. I haven't seen exactly where this starts to just fail as far as curing with too much silicone thinner in it. But uh, this will give you a good idea of how much you can load in the material and still get a nice soft silicone. So now I'm adding the SC5002. And remember, you don't have to add up to this percentage. Typically, when I just want to adjust the softness a little bit, I might use like 10 or 20%. So this is definitely an extreme end of that scale. And I'm going to show at the end of the video why this is necessary sometimes. So now we're going to add some silicone pigment to this. And typically, you know, just using a little dab of silicone pigment, I don't even measure it, but you don't want to typically exceed about 2% of the total mass in silicone pigment. And that's a lot. You have to add a lot to hit that 2% mark. Now we're going to mix that in and you can see already that's a lot lower viscosity than that original batch. So when we thinned it down like that, you notice that's a nice, really thin, super low viscosity material. Now a couple of side effects that you're going to get when you soften a silicone this much is you are going to get a slightly lower tear strength and if you add a whole lot it might even leach some oil. But it's also going to slow down the cure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour this into the mold and then I'm going to let it set for about two hours. So we're going to come back to that and we're first going to demold that first ear. Now the first ear, again this is about an hour later, Always a good idea to keep that mixing cup on hand, check your batch, check your mixing, make sure everything's cured okay, and then demold your part. And this is pretty easy to demold without any special effort, but just remember, instead of prying out with a screwdriver or something like that, always good to use a blunt wooden tool when you're prying out of a resin mold so you don't accidentally mar the inside of your mold, especially if you have, if you have a mold with uh, skin texture or anything like that in it. Now ready to demold that softened piece. And we want to be really careful with this because this is really soft. So it still has really good elasticity and good elongation, but we want to take care that we don't just yank that out of the mold because this is a very soft part. 
And again, if you need to, using a wooden sculpting tool or a popsicle stick to help demold, just make sure you don't use a metal tool that could scrape the inside of the mold. And there we have our finished softened ear. And now ready to test that to see. You can see visibly that's a lot softer. About as soft as we could probably get that and still have it be a stable end product. And we're going to get out my A gauge. So this is a short A gauge for measuring on that A scale. And you'll see that first ear cast, the one that doesn't have thinner in it, it measures just right around a 5. This is probably still curing a little bit, so it's still a little bit on the soft side. And you notice that second ear doesn't even register on that A gauge. So to measure that really soft ear, we're going to have to break out my double O gauge. The double O gauge, of course, measures the double O scale. And you see when we measure that first ear, that's actually going to be up a lot higher. That's going to be around a 50 on the double O gauge. And then when we measure our really soft ear, that's going to be just over a 20 on the double O scale. Now, to give you an idea of how this would work in a practical application, let's take the cross section of this mold. So let's say we're simulating human skin for a medical simulator or an effect skin. We could brush in a very thin membrane of TC5110 using the thixotropic additive, the 5001 thixotropic additive. And we just brush in a very thin membrane on the inside surface of that mold. Now, once we allow that to set, we could then backfill that using a heavily softened layer of TC5110 also. And of course we could laminate other silicones in as well, but the main point of having a membrane on the outside is to give it that very realistic feel of a slightly firm outer layer of skin and that almost a fatty tissue layer underneath. And of course if we plasticize it to the point where it's slightly tacky, we eliminate that tack by having that membrane on the surface. Now, as usual, all of the product links will be in the video description, so be sure to check those out. And as far as my new video schedule goes, uh, any comments that you have about uh, videos, ideas for videos, please put those in the comment section. And my background, if you have any suggestions for what you'd like to see in my background on my video, uh, please put those in there. Or if you think the background is irrelevant to the content that I'm producing, put that in there as well. But thanks again for watching, and if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe, click the little bell icon, and of course, thanks for watching.